Hey guys, good morning. It's time for coffee talk. This one is actually going to be really fast. I've got several moving pieces for today. Got to get the the daughter is headed down to the state championships for tennis in school with her team. So that's pretty cool. So let's see what we got. We're just going to go right into it, all right? Because I got to knock this out. It is a good coffee, though. It is a good coffee. Let's see. Streaming next. I don't know. Good question. Maybe not next week. Maybe the week after. We'll see how that goes. Potentially on Monday or Tuesday for a little bit. But I will update the the Twitch channel when that happens right there. I have a T103 to give away. That's probably the big news for today. I have a no kidding T103. I also have a rental code. I'm going to put the rental code at the end of the video for the T103 down on the comments. Leave me a comment and your in game name. All right, very important. Very important. Comment, in game name. And then I will pick one of those. And I won't put any requirements on it. Whatever you want to say down there. Funny, serious, hello, goodbye, you're terrible, whatever. Throw it down there, in-game name, so that I can go ahead and get Domo to credit that to you. So we've got a T103. That's this guy right here that you can see on the screen. A great big mutant of a thing. The rental code will be in the back at the end of the video. Not too long from now. So you can zing through and find out what it is so let's take a quick look at the missions and specials not a lot going on here there's this dollar a day thing where they've given various things this happens to be a, a dollar of or a day of premium for a dollar and it's discounted down to a dollar from a dollar 49 one for me so i'm assuming i can buy one of those one dollar to check the game out on premium for a day not bad <laughs> hey you can get a uh, panzer 2j for 99 dollars in a big package Okay, it's a lot of stuff, and then you get the tank on top. So there you go with that. There's also all about the Washingtons, which is a $1 deals and a bunch of emblems and things. Just dig through that. That's kind of interesting. If you're into the, the different emblems and inscriptions, it's a pretty good deal for emblems and inscriptions. What else we got? The Object 252 and Defender is on sale. Those are really good premium heavy tanks. They're 8.5s, right? Tier 8.5. So if you're interested in that, they are out there. 1357 is still on sale with that 30 day deal. And I will just jump over to the vehicles here. Quickly now, quickly. And you can see that we've got the Amex 1357. This is that fire and ice thing that was going on last week. We talked about that a bit, some good tanks in there. Really the only one I don't recommend is the stair. There's the object and defender and all its various versions of packages that you can get. There's the Vic. 27% with 30 days, 27% off with 30 days, and a little Vic Mark VIC, which is a useless tank. You're really getting the 30 days if you're interested in that. And that's pretty much it. Really kind of boring on the on the deals right now. There's just really not much going on. So let's take a look at the missions. All right, we do not we do not have an event going on. We have tournament missions, which are still there. We have XP Fever. That required a code, by the way. So remember to put the codes in. And it is done on the 29th. It's done today, basically. Tonight or early tomorrow morning. That's a pretty good deal. You can see that you can crank out some serious experience. And it is by tier. So you can get your tier 10 tank and you can get 50,000 experience on your tier 10 tank. You know how important that is, right? <laughs> I don't know how many tanks, tier 10 tanks have one unlockable thing at least two that I can think of and maybe a few more. So maybe that helps you with that particular tier 10 or it's just experience that you can use for putting into free experience if that's what you want to do as well. Anywho, there it is. There it is. I assume that that's a good percentage for your crew as well since it's... I wonder if it works that way. I guess not. Crew experience is probably separately calculated. So it will put some free experience I assume based on the free experience calculation that goes off of experience don't know it seems a strange thing to have on tier 10 but there you have it the problem being that yeah you can win you can win the 50,000 experience but you have to be driving that tank that you want it to go on when you trip it on the 25th battle so I don't know man plus it's got the win condition which is really painful in there as well 
very useful at tier eight, the tier six to seven, you're getting 30 and 50 and 15 down low. So I'm like, holy cow, 15,000 at tier two. That's like, what is that unlocking? Like, I must be unlocking five to seven tier, tier three tanks or something like that. Pretty funny. Very useful at tier five. I nearly get you through a tier five, I think. So that is what's going on with the XP fever. And then we've got fire and ice. Remember that's a code. You gotta pick fire or ice and you, you play one battle. I've done it. Well, you win one battle, not play. Win one battle, and now whenever this is over on May 3rd, whichever team wins gets goodies. Sometimes they come out and they say, well, we'll just give both teams. We'll see what happens on this one. Unknown. I picked fire. All right. Swedish 4 ends today as well. You can see I did not get it done. I just didn't have time during the week to knock all these requirements out. They weren't really that hard, but it did take a bit of grinding every day or six of the seven days that they allowed you to do it. I only managed to finish it twice in there, as you can see. So not going to get the four, I believe it is, four or five Swedish crew members. Remember though, today's the last day. So if you're on five of them today, you can get your six. If you're less than five today, you're SOL. It ain't happening. Tank class right, that's going on. The WZ-132, remember that you've got to put a code in for the on tracks. And that's it. There's just not really much going on missions-wise either. Kind of quiet. Calm before the storm, I guess. Let's move on to the next. All right, subjects du jour. I really wanted to knock this out quickly for you guys too because it's important to know that the fair play policy got updated again and they've changed a little bit or added. I don't, I don't know if there's much change really. There's a couple wording areas where they've changed, but they've added some of the mods that are now going to be, Ill be illegal. There's going to be a bit of a grace period, and then they're going to start banning people for some things that people might be running right now. So if you're running mods, you really need to pay attention to this. All right. Updating the list of prohibited software. Let's see what it says here. Constantly studying your feedback. One of our biggest concerns is fair play and the so-called use of so-called cheat mods. These unauthorized third-party modifications give those who use them an unfair advantage and spoil your fun. Or in this case, formerly authorized, now to be unauthorized, and that's where they're, they're going to get you if you're not careful. And I don't think they're purposely trying to get you. It's just the way it's going to happen because you've been running these mods thinking they're fine, and they're, they've decided some are not fine. They've been carefully monitoring... Take new measures, blah, blah, blah. All right, thanks for your feedback. We've identified several new modifications. They give those players who use them some advantage over everyone else. These are obviously unfair. Are are they? They're, it's obvious, huh? Well, they've been being used for a while, so it must not have been that obvious. How about we've looked at it and considered it carefully, and now now we believe it's unfair. But this is, this is why this wording is important and drives me crazy. In general... Mods that give you something you can't get off of the vanilla client are considered unfair or illegal. This becomes a little nebulous to me because in the example of the top one, which is the detection of guns on the minimap, gun direction, the argument I've heard before is, well, if one of your friends, if they're spotted, then somebody sees them and that person can relay to you the information. And I'm thinking, really? Or that's, that's your argument that... The potential is there for a, everyone to be on the same comms and for everyone to yell out every moment which way a turret is pointing. That, That's how that fits into the information you can't otherwise get because you can get it via some ridiculous scenario that never could never, I would say possibly, very unlikely to happen. And that's been the argument. So anyway, direction of guns. You can see this mod which shows where people are pointing. That is important. Coming around a corner. Deciding whether to run from cover to cover, whether somebody can get a snap on you, things like that. So those, that is going to be illegal. Displaying arrows to the closest opponents. I've never really seen that mod. These are some I've never seen. This one I was aware of. This one I had no idea existed. Marking adversaries beyond draw distance. Well, that's interesting. Again, all these three fall under the idea that, in theory... If your team was all talking together, they could all talk and tell tell each other all this same information, and somehow you would process all of it, and we'd be able to get that calm out in in a time critical manner, so that the information was good to use. That's that's patently ridiculous. So now they're going to be illegal. This is important. The following modifications are not forbidden yet. 
the new fair play policy rules will come out into force come will come into force not out into on June 1st however we're taking this opportunity to notify you so if you're currently using the mods please remove them <laughs> we'll initiate another massive ban wave based on the current non-updated version of our fair play policy in the near future however the following ban wave all right so June 1st they're going to initiate a ban wave in the near future and then the following one will take into account this change if that's not nebulous enough I don't know what is there's no dates involved here the near future could be tomorrow actually is tomorrow June 1st hold on hold the phone notes the 28th today so in theory and this this article's been out already so it could have been yesterday in theory, the near future is tomorrow, and then there'll be another ban wave, you know, on June 2nd. Because they've given no real dates here, it's hard to know. So, again, this is the reason I'm bringing this out. Sometimes the things they do are arbitrary and capricious. So, danger, danger, be forewarned. Which modifications will be penalized? A new wording. So, these in bold are some of the things they have changed. Marking objects destroyed on the playing field. I don't know why... That needed a change. That's the old mod that shows you when trees go down and when buildings go down. Displaying the position of enemy artillery with tracers. Interesting. The position of enemy artillery with tracers. Doesn't the, doesn't the vanilla client do that, essentially? <laughs> as well as keeping the, those that... As well as those that keep spotted vehicles displayed even when a player is no longer aiming them. They have probably a mod where... If the RD is spotted or anything really, it stays on the map. But the vanilla version has that. It's just a dot. But there are mod versions that give you the rest of the information. Oh, oh wait a minute. As well as it keeps spotted. Maybe that's on the playing field. Maybe those are spotted positions that you can actually see with your camera view. Don't know. I've never played with that one. Uh, blocking is out. We knew that. Alerting. when re Yeah, the reload thing is, is out including displaying an enemy's reloading timer. Alerting you when spotted vehicles are reloading, including displaying an enemy's reloading timer. See, my understanding was you could have that, but it couldn't be the exact timer. It had to be the baseline for the gun. So it looks like maybe that's out now, unknown. Auto-aim or aim bots, things that aim at weakly armored vehicles, at enemy vehicles in general, and also fix the sight on the target behind an obstacle to, or calculate the lead instead of the player. So anything that does lead that adds an extra layer of aiming or calculation there. So that's kind of interesting. Technically the the wheeled tanks sort of do that. They don't do any lead but it's a bit easier of a lock. You don't have to actually be highlighting the guy to make it happen. So that's kind of interesting. And that's it. And the different suspension kinds. And apparently you go to the mod hub and you get a legal mod. Again, they've had problems with that in the past. Some guy actually had some cryptocurrency mining software in the background of one of his mods. Or somebody had added to it. I don't think anyone really got to the bottom of that one. So people found that. On occasion, when you get the, the mod list mods where you can plug and play or pick all the different mods that you want out of it. Kind of an a la carte. I want this, 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 and this. Sometimes banned mods show up in those or they don't get removed quickly. So be careful about that. These are all third party people, you know, most of them trying to be honest about it, but mistakes are made. And it's not gonna matter if some mod maker made a mistake in his mod and added something that was illegal, then you put it on your t on your tank. Even if you get it from the mod hub, you can still eat a ban off of it. So danger, danger on all that. All right, that is it for the mods. Let's move on. All right, remember the medium tank rebalance that they were gonna do with the Amex 30B, the Leopard, the 430U, the 430, and one other, what was there? So STB1, canceled. <laughs> That's right, it's canceled. All right, delayed, I think, is really the right thing. The first iteration of the Super Test rebalance of medium tanks has come to an end. And we have news for you. <laughs> we studied the statistics and reviews and came to the conclusion that the previously mentioned edits of all machines did not show the proper result and require further study in the next iteration of the super test. I wish I could read Russian and was able to follow the Russian blogs and the Russian forum, <clears throat> excuse me, because I suspect there was a hue and outcry 
about the 430 and 430U, and they backed off. <laughs> Imagine having that kind of power. That would be nice, wouldn't it? That is pure speculation. Therefore, we will continue to test the changes. We will add detailed characteristics to the next iteration. According to the test results, the performance characteristics of the Object 430 and 430U will remain the same as on the primary server. Edits are canceled. <laughs> so I don't know what that really means. It sounds like, at least from this tiny little blurb, we're going to keep working on the other three tanks, but in, the, in regards to the 430 and 430U, Ah, we're just kidding. We're not going to nerf them. They're fine. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff right there. We'll keep we'll keep an eye on that one. More more to come on that one. We'll see. All right. Last thing is the T103. You might have might been a little bit surprised by the rollout of the T103, and we sort of were here taken a little bit by surprise. The NA forum or the NA forum on the NA server sort of appeared out of nowhere. And we had a, uh, so I'm going to discuss a little bit about kind of how this went down. It's interesting to me the industries that build up around industries. So you've got the great big gaming industry. You've got Wargaming in particular, one of the companies that's, that's in it with a, a big game and a big title. And then all the little cottage industries that grow up around it, the, the streamers, the YouTubers, the bloggers, the influencers, all that kind of thing that builds up around it. And even to merchandising and everything else that, that happens with it. Reference the DMCA takedown on the guys doing models, you know, a little niche section, a little co cottage industry. Some of them had been using the models, some of them had not. The case of the T103, how these two are connected is there, there was a release of a video while we were under an NDA. And I'm not going to name names, it doesn't matter because I'm more talking about the interesting factors around this thing. And there was a discussion in the CC channel on Discord, and we were kind of talking about, hey, what's going on with this? It, you know, is it under NDA? Do we get to release our stuff? What's happening? And it turns out basically that it, it was a really interesting discussion on, on what the NDA means and what kind of the wiggle room is. And the answer to which I, I don't know even at this point, and potentially we'll get more clarification. I was personally a little bit irritated by it because it seemed to me that we're under NDA. And something got released, and that, so that's a violation. But really, you know, it, there's more to it because the, the argument was that the video was gameplay from somebody else. So while, yes, we'd been given a 103 ourselves to make content, that's why you see CCs driving around with tanks a few days before they're released, or X, I'll say X, I mean, sometimes it's a long time, sometimes it's not long at all. In case of 103, it's pretty much after it was technically released over in RU. That we're not supposed to post it, and and it has to a lot to do has a lot to do with the industry around it because for a lot of the guys now I'm I'm a hobbyist and I don't I don't make much of anything off of this. Doesn't mean I wouldn't like to obviously to be quite honest, but that's where I happen to be. Some of them it's a big big deal to have the scoop right to get the the first video of the tank out there. And there's different ways to do that. You can go on super tests sometimes. But in the case of released premiums like this, it's it's kind of a gated thing where at the release date, when the NDA is lifted, you can, the embargo they call it, you can drop your video at X time. And it's they usually try to coordinate it across the world so it's more or less the same time. That's been difficult across the region. Some, sometimes it's a few hours off. Sometimes it's a day off. In the case of the T-103, it really got kind of strange where it was definitely being released by everybody on the RU cluster and we were still sitting around waiting because we had date X and they apparently had a different date. That's an internal discussion thing and it's always difficult to to coordinate that stuff internationally. I guess that's not really, the, it's not difficult. The logistics can be uh, goobered up, let's just put it that way. It, it's actually kind of easy, but <laughs> if the right people are doing the right thing. But my interest in that is not necessarily that it happened. It's kind of this, this the discussion that happened after it happened because we started talking about that, all these little industries, and then the idea that, hey, what I had, what I sent out, or what was what was actually put out was gameplay from someone else. So I'm not, I'm not breaking the NDA because I was not playing the T103. I was given. I'm just getting content from people, and that goes into blogs and you know. 
things coming out on the various blogs and insider info, kind of this little game within the game of attempting to get to get a scoop while staying, you know, legal by, you know, that much, which I don't have a lot for personally, but that's not relevant because it's really between those creators and the company. So my opinion of it shouldn't really weigh against what Wargaming decides to do or not do. And I'm not saying anything should be done anyway. I'm just, it's interesting to me that the whole dynamic, because it's, it's a thing about driving clicks. Some of these guys are making quite a bit of money. Some of them, that's their livelihood. Some of the bigger YouTube channels. Interestingly, some of the very large channels and creators are probably beyond where being a content creator is very useful. Not sorry, not a content creator, but a a CC community contributor is really very useful. Some of the very largest just get stuff anyway because the company recognizes them that their brand recognition of that particular content creator is so good that just letting them have access to stuff is all they need. And they, as far as having an NDA, I don't even know if they make them sign some of them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, and they don't really carry the content creator tags. Sometimes it just it just depends on how their community guys are working within Wargaming. But we get to the middle tier above me, but you know, not hobbyist, but just really kind of starting to break into the, the money side that it becomes very important that they continue to hold their community contributor status because that's where the content comes from. Because they have that and they've signed the NDA, then they're able to get that information from Wargaming and content and they can then continue to drive their, their various cottage industries, whatever it is that they're doing. So I just, I just thought it was really a fascinating case study with the T-103 based on the way it came out how some people got a little bit of a scoop. Um, it was all over RU anyway, so we were well behind that that power curve. Now what's interesting there is those streams don't really cross too much, right? The fact that NA didn't get too much stuff out probably didn't hurt us very much as far as clicks over in NA and Europe because it's all mostly anyway, not all, but mostly Russian speaking over there. So those that content doesn't cross too much, but the idea that the tank is out there's translations, the buzz starts going, hey, it's over on RU, what's going on in NAEU? Uh, we don't know. That kind of thing causes confusion. So all those all those things are really intertwined. I just thought that was kind of fascinating. And without really uncovering any names or anything, and again, I'm not mad. I just thought it was interesting. thought I'd bring it up to you guys and just just give you a little peek in there about how some of the inner, inner workings go. I don't know what the upshot of it all is going to be. Um, it's it's not a big problem. That, that's not what I'm saying. So, but there may be a few changes or, or something like that along the way. Anyway, I've got a T103 to give away. I also have a rental code. It's a three day rental code. Code good till the fifth. Three three there are three days. Good to the fifth of May. I'm gonna put it on the screen right there. First person to it gets it. I've got one more to give away, which I'll do a little bit later, maybe tomorrow. I need to get it. I need to make sure that you have three days to do it, so I don't want to wait too late. I've given away eight already. People have been kind of enjoying the tank. It's a balanced tank. I have a review out, so make sure you check that out. And that's all I've got for Coffee Talk. Nice and quick, folks. We'll see you next week.